Do you want to send your faraway lover a kiss? A Chinese contraption with warm, moving, silicon lips appears to have just the answer. The device, advertised as a way to let long-distance couples share real physical intimacy, is causing a buzz among Chinese social media users. Want to see what it looks like? Sure. Now hear me out. <laughs> Tell you what. When Andrani and I had a long-distance relationship, we didn't need artificial lips. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying. I don't. What are you saying? Josh! Hey, welcome back to our stupid reactions of Corbin. I'm Rick. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, for more juicy content. Thanks for pitching for those who have a lot of buttons. I will say this. I remember the first time we say gave, it then. The first time we gave each other a kiss goodbye on our videos. Me? I've no. never kissed you ever. Me and my wife. Um, I just happened to lean into the camera as if to give her a kiss, and she leaned in to do the same thing. We both pulled back from the camera and freaked out because it actually felt like we gave each other a real kiss. But I would not want the silicone lips. That's freaky. I'll give you some silicone. Uh, anyways, Your mom has silicon lips. Keep it going, everybody. Today we have a informational. This is why most Indians live above this line. Uh, which line? Uh, it's in their thumbnail. Oh, I thought it was like a Ricky Gervais joke line. Or no, so like, oh, wait, I'll show. It I'm to assuming you. it's a line on the map. Yeah. So this line right here. So it yeah. looks like it has Delhi. I think Delhi's it's, probably it's, above there. Maybe Punjab. Why most Indians live above? They live above that. Like, how can that be true? That's what it says. Oh, don't they live below that line? Fifty percent leave here. Delhi looks like it's below that. Mumbai is below that. Oh, so All of Tamil Nadu is below that. Yeah, it says most Indians live above this line, but it says, and then it says fifty percent on the in the thumbnail. Fifty percent live here. Fifty percent. Are live. you kidding me? That's also not most. That's half. Uh, <laughs> But anyways, I'm guessing the video will explain to us what and why. I'm utterly flabbergasted. Uh, well, there's a lot of people in India. And I am gobsmacked. Thank you, Gob. Here we go. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you want a cough drop? Need a lozenge? Yeah. Hundreds, if not thousands of years, India has remained the world's second most populous country behind China. Passing China and soon. Only a few more months. Yep. That historical reality will change forever. Sex. At some point sex, in 2023, sex. Keep doing the it, Indian Indians. population will finally overtake the Chinese with more than 1.4 billion <laughs> people. <laughs> Suck it, Chinese. The Clearly they the didn't. Or they would be. <laughs> <laughs> There'd be more of them. India will likely well, maybe that's, continue to remain maybe that's why. <laughs> the world's most populous nation. And it has been a long time coming. As recently as 70 years ago, back in 1950, China's population of 552 million was still significantly larger than India's three million. <laughs> and then they said, million. only one kid. Over the seven plus in the 1950, it had a larger population than us India's population currently. grew by a whopping 390%, while China's only grew by Lots 255%. Of and while China's population is beginning to stagnate and decrease, India's is still growing. By the midpoint of the century in 2015, they're a grower, not a shower. If you know what I'm saying? China will lose around 30 million people from the population <laughs> today, <laughs> while India will add another 200 million. That's such a Corbin more. reaction. Nearly an entire Brazil's worth of additional. Way to lose 30 million people, years. idiots! But the massive explosion in India's population over the past several decades has not been even across the whole country. Whoa! And India's what a bridge! Growth across the it's in the cold climes. Will not be even. Well, they stay inside more in often. Fact, and need to get warm. The states within India already have fertility rates, the amount of children born per woman, that are lower than the natural population replacement level of 2.1. This means that the birth rate across most of India is actually already more comparable to countries in the West and elsewhere who are experiencing natural population decline, like Japan, Germany, and the United Kingdom. Oh, Japan! The only states in India that are still got serious problems. And the states that will add the vast majority of those additional 200 million Indians by 2050 are all up in the north of the country. Hell yeah! In these states: Bihar, Meghalaya, Uttar Pradesh, Jharkhand, and Manipur. And perhaps unsurprisingly, these are the same general areas that have been leading the majority of India's population growth 
growth now for decades. If you draw a line across India up here in the north, you will discover a startling population imbalance within the country. Nearly half of India's population of about 1.4 billion people live to the north of this line. Damn. Across just a relative sliver of the country's total Would have never guessed the that. the half, of course, live beneath it across the majority of India's landmass. This line of population distribution within India can come as a shock to many Americans and people in the West who are unfamiliar with India. Because the majority of India's largest mega cities that most Westerners have heard of are actually Bar in below, the yeah. below that in the south. Of the top five largest cities in India, Mumbai, four of them Bangalore, are Hyderabad. And of the top 10, seven Chennai, of them beneath it, including the largest and most densely populated city in India of all, Mumbai. Yeah. The sheer scale of Mumbai's population is difficult for a lot of people to understand. So let me try and put it this way. Mumbai is a coastal city and located across an island called South Sent. This island is only 619 square kilometers We've been size, there. <laughs> which is smaller than Singapore, and yet it is home to more than 20 million oh, people, which is greater than the entire population of Kazakhstan, the world's ninth Kazakhstan. biggest country. To put it another way, all of the boroughs of New York City combined, Manhattan, Brooklyn, Queens, Staten Island, and the Bronx, add up to 784 square kilometers, which is 42% more land than South Set Island, where Mumbai is located. Wow. And yet, New York City's population <laughs> is less than 8.5 million people. South Set Island, therefore, you could fit at least 12 million more people. But we've been there. But across an area that, that was the gate. Times the it didn't size feel that way, though. Including this place called Duravi. Did it feel like it was over Mumbai twice the population of, the of Manhattan? In the no. world and not because of its area. The whole place is only about two square kilometers in size. We're about three fifths of Central Park in the middle of Manhattan. And yet, there are about one million people who live crowded within here, making it one of the most densely populated places anywhere on the planet. And yet, insanely crowded Dharavi within Mumbai on South Set Island is still south of the population line within the area where the minority of Indians over three fifths the size of the Central Park and there's a million though, of them in it. India through the lens of population density, where you can now clearly see the nearly unbroken chain of I didn't realize that. clusters of people across the north of India above the line, and only scattered clusters of high population urban areas across the area south of the line, including most of India's big mega cities like Mumbai. Bangalore and Hyderabad. But why is India's population pattern shaped this way, with a massive amount of people living within the interior of the country up in the north, and relatively fewer people living around the coasts and in the south? A very big part of the explanation is simply the Indian subcontinent's geography and its influence on weather patterns. And we'll begin here by swapping out the population density map for a topographic map. One of the biggest keys to the puzzle are simply the enormous arc of mountains to the north of the subcontinent, the Himalayas, yeah. the Himalayas and the Hindu Kush. These mountains are the tallest and the most formidable in the world, and are among the youngest mountains as well. You like well. smoking that? They were formed millions of years ago. Anybody ever smoked the Hindu Kush? First crashed into the Eurasian plate, a geologic process that is still ongoing. Just as it has for tens of millions oh, of wow. years. Oh wow! Look at that. The Indian plate. Oh is my God! Crashing northwards. Nature born. Plate at a pace of around 67 millimeters a year, which is contributing to the already towering mountains of the Himalayas growing even higher. Mount Everest, already the highest mountain in the world, is continuing to grow even higher at a pace of around four millimeters a Just year. Just call me of Mount Everest. Process. You're growing at a pace of about four millimeters a year. Yep. Across yep. the Himalayas that soar to more than 7,200 meters above sea level. And they all serve to create the most significant barrier across land anywhere on the planet. Yeah. Most significantly for India, these towering mountains basically act like a wall, and they block nearly all of the frigid and dry polar winds that blow down from the north from Siberia across Central Asia. As a result, the land to the north of the mountains in Tibet is effectively a high, dry, and cold desert because there's nothing to stop all those winds until they hit the wall of the mountains. And because of these mountains, they cause the opposite climatic mountains. effects over to the south in India. Without any of the cold and dry winds blowing in from Central Asia, northern India is kept significantly warmer and, and more tropical than it yeah. would be. And consequently, the temperate zone extending across northern India is significantly warmer than any other temperate zone on the planet, especially during the winter months, which means that the growing season for also has year is better air quality year round and longer than pretty much anywhere else. But then the other big thing that the tower ah! is due for northern India and its population potential is significantly affect the area's monsoon winds and levels of precipitation. During the summer months, moist air evaporated from the Indian Ocean will be pushed into the subcontinent. And when that moist air reaches the mountains, it will rise and cool, but fail to climb high enough to reach over the mountains into Tibet. Which is another reason why Tibet is so dry and arid. 
Then that cool and moist air will have nowhere left to go but back down from the mountain slopes and across the open plains of northern India and Bangladesh. Which often means that the summer months between June and September will see an absolutely ungodly amount of rainfall here in an annual process known as the southwestern monsoon. Yep. The vast plains of northern India don't get most of their water from rainfall. Instead, they get most of it from the rivers that also come down from the towering mountains up in the north. You see, the mountains here store the third largest concentration of freshwater ice and snow in the world, remaining only behind Antarctica and the Arctic Circle. As a result, the Himalayas alone contain an estimated 15,000 separate glaciers that collectively store somewhere around 12,000 cubic kilometers worth of freshwater, roughly equivalent to the entire volume of water found in Lake Superior within North America. So as a result Jeez. of their height and their enormous volumes of water, three of the world's mightiest rivers all begin up here, and they all flow to the south through the plains of northern India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh, the Indus, the Ganges, and the Brahmaputra rivers. And these rivers are what grant the wide open plains of the northern subcontinent their name. And the uh, Indo-Gangetic Plain. The Ganges River is a big draw. Flat, arable farm People live around water. Larger than the entirety and it's important. Of France, and there's the a lot of spiritual significance to the Ganges for them. Yeah. Anywhere in the world. That, I, that makes a lot of sense. Great Mississippi Basin in the United States. And best of all, the Indus, Ganges, and Brahmaputra Rivers and all of their tributaries. Ah, oh, man. This huge plain are all a lot of porn in this video. Up in the Himalayas, which means that they maintain a continuous flow of water all throughout the year, and they aren't heavily dependent upon the erratic winds of the weather Aww, that breaks puppy. the rain. And even better, the glacial melt into these rivers from the mountains blesses the rivers with an abundance of rich minerals and nutrients. Ugh. Which means that whenever the rivers overflow into the region's floodplains, they distribute those nutrients into the soil and effectively This is a really well done video. And powerful natural fertilizer. In short, a perfect I've got some of rich, powerful natural the fertilizer. Most fertile piece of farmland Every morning. in the world that can grow a massive amount of food all throughout the year to support a lot of people. It's no surprise then that when you compare a map of India's population density with a map of India's elevation, with a further map of India's agricultural product activity, you'll see that most of the agricultural productivity is up in the population belt of people across the flat plains of the north, while much of the Indian interior to the south of the line is simply a lot less agriculturally productive and, consequently, has a lower population density. It's also a small wonder, then, how the northern Indian state of Uttar Pradesh alone became home to more than 240 million It's a powerful today, place. Greater than the UP. entire population of Pakistan or Brazil, and all in an area that's no larger than the United Kingdom. Conversely, the southern portions of India beneath the population line don't have the same scale of advantages towards agriculture and population growth that's seen in the north. Much of the area beneath the line is dominated by a large geographic feature known as the Deccan Plateau, hmm. a largely arid, rocky, and hilly expanse of land with an average elevation of about 600 meters. And while the Himalayan mountain range greatly improves the north's ability to grow food, hmm. another mountain range down here across the south and the west inhibits this region's ability to do the same. The Western Ghats here that extend across the westernmost fringe of the country. While they may not be as dominating as the Himalayas, the Western Ghats are still a significant mountain range nonetheless, with many of their peaks over 2,000 meters in height, which are higher than the biggest mountain range found in Australia <laughs> that separates that continent's Suck it, Australia. eastern coastal plain from the dry outback desert of the interior. And in Good a similar eye. fashion to those mountains in Australia, the Western Ghats here in India generally cause the same kind of effect over the Deccan Plateau of the Indian interior. There's only a Sorry, you hear Western Ghats, and I think about somebody saying, You don't know who Ghats! In the West, where winds blowing in from the ocean are actually capable of depositing their rainfall. I can Once deposit my rainfall. winds strike the Western Ghats, they fail to <laughs> climb over them, and so the lands to their east across the Deccan Plateau are drier and more arid than they otherwise would be were the mountains not to exist. This is why, when you look at a precipitation map of India, you can clearly see the effect that the Western Ghats have, with abundant rainfall across the narrow strip of a coastal plain in the west, and significantly less rainfall immediately beyond them in the interior, where the Deccan Plateau is. 
And then to complement the continuous Western Ghat Mountains, there is a similar mountain range across the east of India as well, the Eastern Ghats. These aren't continuous and they're a little smaller than the mountains across Western India, so they don't block as much moisture coming in from the Bay of Bengal, but they do serve to block some of it. So the vast expanse of the Deccan Plateau in the interior is less flat and receives less rainfall than the plains of the north, which of course makes agriculture a more difficult practice here. But then there is the further disadvantage that the rivers across the south of India here are not fed by glaciers like they are in the north, and instead, they're fed by rainfall. The biggest three rivers here to consider are the Godavari, Krishna, and Kaveri, all three of which begin within the Western Ghats mountain range and flow eastwards across the Deccan Plateau before emptying into the Bay of Bengal. But of course, the Western Ghats are nowhere near as high as the Himalayas are, and they're located a lot further south where there aren't any cold winds blowing in from Siberia, so they don't have any glaciers glaciers. And that means that all of the rivers here are entirely fed by the rainfall blowing in from the Arabian Sea. Mm. That means that they aren't as suitable for agriculture as the glacial-fed rivers up in the north like the Ganges and the Brahmaputra for two critical reasons. One, they don't get the same kinds of minerals and nutrients as the glacial-fed rivers do, which means that when they flood, they don't deposit the same levels of nutrients into the soil. And two, their water volumes are left to the mercy of the weather. So when it doesn't rain for a while, the rivers have less water in them and there's less water available for things like irrigation that's necessary for agriculture. While conversely, the rivers up in the north almost always have a lot of water in them for irrigation because they're fed by the world's third largest system of glaciers that aren't dependent on the erratic winds of the weather. While there are locations of high agricultural productivity in the south of India, they're more limited in area and scattered apart from each other in stark contrast to the huge, continuous piece of farmland across the north of India. And thus, this is why you also have smaller and more scattered concentrations of high population density across the southern section of India beneath the line in places like Mumbai, Hyderabad, and Bangalore but not large stretches of continuously high density like you see in the north. But it's not like the population of India beneath this line is low. There's still more than 700 million people who live there, which is about the entire population of Europe. It's still pretty densely populated at about the same scale as Germany all throughout it. It's just that the overall density to the north above the line in places like Uttar Pradesh and Bihar is just absolutely insane, and the most crowded stretch of land anywhere in the world. And with what's arguably the most productive piece of farmland anywhere in the world, it's really no wonder why. Now, if you're anything like me, you're probably intensely curious about why our world works the way it does. But the world is a complicated and sometimes difficult to understand place. Hmm. Science and math serve as the yeah, primary tools in uh, helping. Ad for him now. A great video. Re uh, great. Very so much info. Very informative. Yeah. I think we've seen some of his videos before. Uh, he, he does a great job. And this channel has 6.64 million subscribers. And <laughs> wow, deserving. Because um, a lot of good information there, obviously confirmed that it was good information but yeah. it um, seems like it was pretty well researched yeah uh to me but yeah that makes sense most most times large cities are built by water and where the most and obviously yep. in, uh, it probably has something to do with in in india as, uh, around it being also very spiritual yeah uh part of the yeah i know for well. sure the Ga the, the ganges is yeah yeah um except in la it was not built around water. Uh, this is the dumbest big city anybody's ever built. <laughs> and the, the rainfalls that we're getting right now, which thank you know, SoCal's totally dependent on snowpack. So in our mountain ranges, we need a big snowy winter up there because then it melts and it goes into the Central Valley behind, which is north of us, which is where all our farming takes place, and comes down here. The big problem we have here that's so stupid. Any rainwater we get, not not necessarily the meltdown. They channel that stuff pr really well. But torrential amounts of rain that we're getting right now just goes into the ocean. They're, yeah, now, they're now starting to talk about how do we store this stuff? Because we live in an arid country and we need to make sure that we have an area of place for our water to be coming in. But we don't have enough water. Yeah, we do in the wintertime. Well, what should we do with that water? We're just going like, to go into the ocean for all the fish. To have more water to drink. Those well, are uh, that's specifically right there, Gavin Newsom. Well, <laughs> spot on, Gavin Newsom. Well, it was way before Gavin that they were built. I know, <laughs> and I'm not making fun of Gavin. And they were they were built because uh, our we city just, is 
not built for a lot of rain. It's very flat and so prone to flooding. Uh, and so I think it was in the 40s. We had, and the way California is set up, we do get these torrential rains every once in a while. Yeah. Um, like every 10, 10 whatever, to 15 years. Whatever. Um, At least that's what like, it's been. We'll a, see what it's going to be. A really big one about a hundred years, almost a, maybe 80 years ago, that flooded Los Angeles and killed, I think, over 100,000 people. And so they built these things to just get the water out as fast as, as possible. As fast as they can. Yeah, we um, have actually, not too far from here, the mm -hmm. Sepulveda Basin. And when it gets... We haven't had that as much as the rain's been really bad. The Sepulveda mm -hmm. Basin has, they always close it, so it gets yeah. flooded. But there's a dam there, and the water levels can get yeah. five, six, seven meters deep yeah. in that basin. Um, but yeah, that's that's why that, that is the way it is. Los Angeles was never intended to be one of the largest cities in the world. But we are. No, <laughs> it, was, it was agricultural. Yeah. <laughs> And then Walt Disney came. Yeah. And the rest is history. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, very informative video. Um, it's just, I, wow, I had no idea on a lot of I'm that. I'm guessing, I, I know we have a lot of stupid videos from UP. Uh, the, the two, some of the, the stats that just staggered me were that that area with one million people in it in Mumbai is only three fifths the size of Central Park. <laughs> Guys, if you've never been to Central Park, you wouldn't have that idea in your mind. But that's, I can't imagine a million people in Central Park. I mean, that's thats thats a lot of freaking people. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, if you think you see the million people that show up to rallies in Washington, D.C., that's about that's half the size of Central Park. And then the other stat that's mind-boggling to me is how Mumbai has nearly three times the population of of the, the boroughs of New York. Yep. Wow. Why are they called boroughs? I don't know where the term came from. Oh, the mob. Probably. I don't know where borough came from. I know where the term, I know why it's called the great, the big apple, but I don't know why it's where the term boroughs. I know what the five boroughs are. And usually when people say Manhattan, they think of all of New York. And Manhattan is just one of the five boroughs. Um, but it's called the Big Apple because it, that, has, that has horse racing origins. Mm. And uh, okay. horse racing was really popular in New York at one point. Anyways, yeah, fantastic video. Let us know uh, if, what you thought about the video. If there's anything that was incorrect or anything uh, that was wrong, let us know. Uh, and any other videos we can react to down below. Just